Hey everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Welcome to this video series on creating print-based output from Madcap Flare. Now I'm going to let you know right away, this is a long video series because there's just so much to cover and I'm not even going to try to cover absolutely everything. Really just the main things that you're going to want to know. And uh, even though it's a long video series because I'm really going to be building uh, print-based output from the ground up, you don't necessarily need to watch the entire thing unless you want to know all of the customization that I'm going to take you through. You might just want to pick and choose certain parts because I am going to show, you know, quick and easy methods for creating print-based output. And, uh, you know, and then later on in the video series, touch on some things like images and page breaks. Maybe you want to skip ahead to that, or you want to just want to watch the whole thing. So, Creating print-based output from Flare, it's a combination of various files and settings from different places. And then when you build the output, they all just kind of come together. And it allows you to have a lot of flexibility in content reuse. Now, as I go through this video series, again, I, I said, I'm going to be building this uh, output from the ground up and really get into some heavy customization. And what I'm going to do is show you, just kind of take you through my, my thought process as I go through and attempt to do this and troubleshoot on the fly, because that's the way real life is. You go through and you, you put things into place and you think, okay, this is going to look good in the output. And you find out, oh, I forgot something, or I don't understand this part. And, I'm, and we're just going to work our way through that. So Creating this print-based output, it can be as easy or as complex as you want it to be. It really can. The more customization that you want to do, the longer it's going to take uh, and, and the more effort. Okay. Now, why? Why would you want to you know, do something that's uh, that's going to take a long time if you go this heavy customization route? Well, yeah, you could use something that's pretty quick and easy that you're used to, like Microsoft Word. That's fine. But the problem is you're going to be missing out on a lot of what Flare specializes in, the single sourcing, the content reuse, the, the power behind that. And uh, you're going to find that if you are going to be creating you know, tons of PDFs and they all share a lot of the common elements, it's going to be way easier to do that in Flare and to maintain it going forward. So... Uh, what we're doing in this video series, we're, we're going to be creating a foundation. That's what this is all about. So yeah, it is going to take a good deal of time to go through and build this, but we're working on this foundation. Then once you have that in place, then it's going to be, make it much easier to reuse these pieces for dozens or hundreds or thousands of PDFs. Uh, you are really going through this exercise to set yourself up for success. Let me just give you an idea of the videos that are in this series so you know what's ahead. First of all, I am going to cover uh, creating print-based output uh, using quick and easy methods. So if you just want you just want to get going. You just want to put it in place as, as in as easy a way as possible and putting your branding, your company's logo, things like that. I'm going to go through that. Then I am going to begin the process of building some, you know, heavy custom, heavily customized output. And uh, I'm going to begin with a fancy mock-up that I get from a, uh, a graphic designer, because that's not my wheelhouse to do that. So I'm going to start with the end result. What, what do we want this to look like? Then I'm going to, each video is really going to tackle the different pieces of this uh, print-based output. And we're going to start at the beginning, you know, the title page. We're going to look at that. We're going to build that thing. And then a copyright page, we'll, uh, we will create that. And then generated TOC. Of course, you want a TOC. So we got this front matter, and then we're going to go into the chapters, all of these different pieces for the, the chapters, which is the bulk. That's the main, uh, that's the guts of your uh, 
your print output. And then we will get into the back matter. So maybe an appendix. And then uh, after that, an index. And once we have these pages all set up, then we're going to kind of connect them. And we're going to do that through an outline TOC file. That's a really, really important part of this process. And then we're going to get into targets, the, the engines that create the output and the different settings that you want to make sure that you have set or your, the options that you have. And we will review the end results from that and then go back and, and make changes because that's just kind of what happens. And then I'm also going to do a, a video on images. I thought that's important to look at uh, how images are different in print-based output than in online output and some of the things that you might be concerned about doing. And then of course, page breaks. Page breaks are really important in uh, print-based output, knowing uh, how to create these divisions in your content so that things start on one page as opposed to ending on another page. And then finally, I'm going to look at uh, just creating additional PDFs as you go on. So really we're focusing on one PDF as we build this. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you the payoff, the benefit of this that you can easily just kind of substitute these parts because you've built the foundation and you can just be off and running creating as many PDFs as you need. And yes, I am going to be focusing this video series on PDFs. That's the most common kind of output that people are creating print-based. Of course, you can create word output, uh, but I am just going to focus on PDF. It's, it's enough to just choose one and go with that. Now, all these videos that I'm mentioning in this series, you just go to the very end of this video, you're going to see the playlist. So you always know where they are and you can move from one to the next, uh, all the way to the very end. Okay, that those are the videos that make up this entire series. Now, before we get started uh, in this video series, one important point I want to make is that Madcap Flair is really an online first mentality. And that means that you are writing in smaller uh, units of content. You're, you're creating smaller topics, and then there are even files that are smaller than that, snippets and so forth, putting them together. So you're thinking first and foremost about how these things are going to work in an online uh, output, uh, you know, a help system, whatever. Because when you go online, you're not reading this gargantuan, really, 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 really long page. Sometimes you are, but in most cases, it's just small digestible units that you're that you are consuming, that the reader is consuming. And so that's what 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 Flair is doing is it's allowing you to create these small units and put them together into this kind of online you know, system. And then what you do is you are taking these smaller units and you're stitching them together. So it's more linear output uh, for print-based output. And uh, so you just kind of have to think about that as you're creating these. So when I'm creating content, I think first about, all right, this is gonna be on this page, but at the same time, I'm also keeping in mind, oh yeah, this is going to be part of this um, manual and it might be part of this PDF over here. That's the great thing about this kind of um, workflow, working from smaller files and putting them together because now you can mix and match them. The same topic can be in multiple PDFs. It can be in multiple online help systems. It's very easy to do that uh, when you're when you're working with smaller pieces of content, then if you were, say, to create a really, really long document and think print first and then break that into pieces and, you know, somehow create online output, it's just easier to do it this way. So that is one thing to keep in mind as you're working through this. We are, it's an online world and we're, we're thinking online first, but we also want to be able to reuse this stuff in manuals and other print uh, types of output. 
Just a few final points that I want to make before we dive into this. As I said, I'm going to be troubleshooting this as we go through and build this output. But sometimes I might I might show you the, the solution. Other times I might point it out and uh, and just say, oh, this is probably what you would do to get past this, but not actually go through all those steps uh, just as a time saver. Uh, another thing to mention is that I'm not going to be solving every possible issue that could come up with print-based output as I do this. I couldn't possibly do that anyway. Um, what I'm doing is I'm working from this mock-up. So I'm just going to solve the issues as I encounter them uh, each step of the way. Another thing to keep in mind is that there's always more than one way to do something. And I am going to show you one way to, um, to make these things happen. But that doesn't mean that there aren't alternatives. If you were to give this um, this challenge to, you know, 20 different flair authors, you'd probably get, you know, 20 different answers um, along the way and how to do this or that. Some of the things will be the same, but, you know, there are different techniques. There are different just options. And so I'm just showing you, you know, one uh, thread of options, a one way of doing this as we go. And yeah, there's uh, going to be a lot of steps. And again, we're building the foundation for this. But keep in mind, once you get done with this, this foundational um, part of creating your, your print-based output, the settings are there. You have your files in place. I haven't gone back and touched mine, in, uh, my settings, my print-based files in years. Uh, you just don't need to. Uh, once you get that in place, now you can concentrate on the uh, authoring the actual content. All right. So there we go. Now let's get started with the next movie where I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to create print-based output. So I'll see you in that video.